YouTube and welcome to another video from Richco Photo. Hope you enjoyed the trip around the Warwick. If you're not watching that video, go back and have a look. So now we're heading down towards HMS Victory, uh, Nelson's flagship. And the reason I'm doing this in the studio is because the wind was really strong that day and it tended to blow right across the GoPro as I was filming. So I thought I would just uh, do this in the studio so it makes it a bit cleaner for you. So as you can see, they're having some restoration work done on the side of the ship. It's been sat in there uh, waiting to be done. They're spending some money on it. Also, the masts are away being done as well. They all need to be fixed. Obviously, the ship's 250 years old, so it needs some restoration from time to time. So this is the key now on the dry dock where it's kept. And we just wander on down. We've got a 2.30 exit. They do tours round now. So you can just get on it and uh, the guide takes you around which you will see in this video. Loads of facts, loads of interesting things to look at. I hope you enjoy the walk round as much as we did. So over to me, here we go. It's in the dry dock, mate. Okay. Mind your head on here, mate. <laughs> Daddy does. And the Battle of Trafalgar, which she's most famous for, 1805, she was 40 years old, even by then. Now, she's, uh, what I mean by commission, she's still the Royal Navy ship with the Royal Navy crew on here 24 hours a day, sitting over there watching the telly at the moment, the, the quartermaster and that. Uh, so uh, they're keeping themselves busy. <laughs> but it is Sunday afternoon and there's not much else to do for that. But they look after the ship, do rounds all the time, fire watch, things like that. We're the flagship of the first sea lord. So the top man in the Navy, so there's a lot of ceremonial stuff goes on here. Dinner parties, medal ceremonies and that. We've had three Chinese ships in all week and there was a lot of diplomatic stuff going with that as well. So a busy ship. Um, even after the Battle of Trafalgar, 1805, they still refitted her and she still carried on another seven years active until um, 1812. 1812, they brought her into the harbour. She sat out there for another 110 years until 1922. By 1922, she'd been 157 years in the water and she was getting in a poor state underneath. And so they brought her into this dry dock and from 1922 to 1928, restored her as you see her now, as she looked at Trafalgar in 1805. After 1928, when we reopened it, we've had since then, we've had over 25 million visitors through here. So it's a busy old ship, you know, there's a lot of people sat here, haven't they? Um, Battle of Trafalgar took place off Cape Trafalgar, which is about halfway between Gibraltar and Cadiz and the, uh, <coughs> down off Spain and the, and the Atlantic there. It was the time of Napoleon. Napoleon was invading all of Europe. He wanted England as well. In fact, if he'd won, we'd be doing this in French now, wouldn't we? Which is not such a good idea. And uh, so um, uh, we, chased the battle, we chased the French fleet. The, the, the victory was the, the flagship of the Mediterranean fleet in the two years leading up to Trafalgar with Nelson on here. We've been chasing the French fleet out of Toulon in southern France all the way around the Mediterranean, through the Straits of Gibraltar, over to the West Indies, didn't catch them there, back to the port of Cadiz in southern Spain where we were blockading them, where they joined up with the Spanish fleet. Eventually, Villeneuve, the French Admiral, was told by Napoleon to bring his fleet out into the Mediterranean. They made a run from it, and that's where the Battle of Trafalgar happened. Um, if we hadn't won that, as I say, we'd be speaking French. Ten years later, the uh, Battle of Waterloo, where Napoleon was defeated, and uh, uh, that was 1815, 1815 to 1914, the First World War, 99 years of relative peace in Europe. <coughs> so it'd be an important turning point in British history. So as we go around, watch out for the beams. These things come down to below my shoulder height in places there. Lanterns, things like that as well. Uh, just watch out for those. A little bit slippery on the upper deck in places, and we've got ring bolts up there. So watch your head. So we're in the great cabin there. This is where Nelson spent over two years before Trafalgar. Uh, this is still used for dinner parties, medal ceremonies, as I said. Um, in, the, in the glass cabinet there is the current First Sea Lord ceremonial sword. That was Sir George Zambellis is the, uh, is the First Sea Lord at the moment. This is his ship. And uh, imagine though going to sea with this lot laid up. Wouldn't last for long, would it? Rocking and rolling around here, there. So um, this table breaks into leaves, into sections, and this would be all folded up, put in the hold, along with the chairs. There's a folded up one at the end there wrapped up in canvas, put it in the hole for safekeeping until they got back into port. Once they, this was all clear, we had four guns in here. These aren't just windows, they're gun ports. There's the pulleys for the ports and the shackles for the guns, four 12-pounders. We have 104 guns on this ship. 
So this would be as clear in here in battle as it is out there, so completely stripped. 821 men on here at the Battle of Trafalgar as well. So just think of that as you're going around. And this was all for one, the Admiral. This was built as a flagship to carry an Admiral to command a fleet. And uh, of course, um, the Admiral got all this space. Most of the crew got 16 inches, about half a meter of hammock space each. So it did pay to be an Admiral, didn't it? <laughs> Once this is all clear, the panelling as well is all hinged. This one, this section here is up. That can drop down and subdivide this room here. And the ones behind you, you see hinges <coughs> on those as well. So in action, everything would sweep out the way, clear the decks for action. Back here in the day cabin, the Admiral's office, the little round table's an original piece that actually belonged to Nelson. Uh, they believe he wrote his final prayer on there before the battle. Two little doorways leading out to quarter galleries out the back there. Uh, just a little room out there with a, a box with a hole in it. Uh, what they call a seat of easement. A loo with a view, okay? <laughs> <laughs> yes, the Admiral is a special, um, and uh, the captain, captain above, the wardroom below, they all got their own special um, conveniences there. The men had the heads, the head of the ship. Still called them, you know, in the Navy, the heads nowadays. That's because it's sitting outside, right out in the open. Sit there on a rough day, you get your own back. Uh, <laughs> behind us here, port, three portraits. Lady Emma Hamilton, Nelson's mistress, his girlfriend, boys and girls. And uh, Nelson and Emma had a daughter, Horatia little for, her faded portrait in the corner of her. She was about four and a half when Nelson died. This is Nelson in his dress, his ceremonial uniform. He wasn't all that tall, he was about five foot six, 1.68 meters, uh, but he loved this painting because the artist beat and painted the gun smaller, so it made him look taller. <laughs> <laughs> the glass cabinet over there is a copy of that number one's uniform, you know, his ceremonial uniform. The jacket that's outside is a copy of his undress uniform, like your working clothes, and that's a copy of what he was wearing at Trafalgar. Right. Many of you have been to Greenwich National Maritime Museum, one or two of nodding, I think, yeah, you've seen the original up there. This one's exactly the same, except it hasn't got a hole in it. <laughs> Senior officer comes on board, a victory, and one of the first people he meets is the ship's carpenter. We'll measure him up for a wooden box, his cot, his bed. But now, as I said, Nelson's not very tall, so this bed is quite a small cot there. Down below, they kept a lid for it as well, because it could also double up as your coffin if need be. Which is always handy, isn't it? You know? So, idea of waking up every morning thinking I'm sleeping in my coffin? No. Not good, is it? So, what happened is uh, Emma uh, embroidered drapes to go over it to make it feel a bit more homely. So, you're going to lead off through that way now and go and see the cot, and then we're going up onto the upper deck. That's what he slept in. Mm. That's his uh, bed. So we're now on the quarter deck. This is like the bridge on a modern ship, you know, where the officers would be up here. And uh, this little short deck behind his here is the poop deck. We're allowed to say poop on here, kids, it's nothing rude. Yeah, it's nothing to do with the buckets. It comes from a Latin word, pupus, meaning uppermost and aftermost. But that's the signal and navigation deck. And from there, before the Battle of Trafalgar, <laughs> Nelson Raider, Turning me round. England expects that every man will do his duty. Along the rail there, leather fire brackets with the uh, cipher GR, George Rex, George III, King of England at the end, at uh, that time. Any Americans here? No? Oh, that's a shame. I always like to point out it's their last king. <laughs> <laughs> they like that, not a lot. <laughs> And uh, below the poop, we got the ship's wheel. Now that took four to eight men to handle that, depending on the weather. That's why you've got the double wheel. In front of it, the binnacle with a couple of magnetic compasses. And so the men were given the compass bearing to steer. Under the poop, we got three cabins. Right back half there is the captain's quarters. Captain Thomas Masterman Hardy took the captain of the Victory at Trafalgar. And he was six foot four, oh, almost two proper. meters. And uh, there's a skylight in there. It's the only place he could stand upright in his own cabin. So they weren't all short in those days. It drives us nuts with everybody coming on here thinking because the decks are low, they're all short. A couple of inches maybe, nothing much. The decks are low for stability. Hardy wasn't the tallest man on the ship. They reckon William Bunce, the carpenter on here, was six foot seven. Cool. And so, you know, I'll show you where he lived later. This is, you know, this, about this height. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Um, decks, you know, you've got all this top weight, so you need to keep it low for stability. Over on the right hand side, Thomas Atkinson's cabin, the uh, ship's sailing master and navigator. And on the left hand side, John Scott's cabin. John Scott, not a very lucky man, the Admiral's secretary, he was cut in half 
by a round shot on this quarter deck at the Battle of Trafalgar. If you go to Greenwich and see Nelson's jacket, underneath is his white breeches. Well, Nelson didn't have an exit wound, but these breeches are covered in blood. That's from Scott being cut in half in front of him. They just picked up the two bits, flung them over the side. Oh. What they did with British casualties in action. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the Battle of Trafalgar, Monday 21st of October 1805, um, 60 big ships like this in the battle, 27 major British, 33 French and Spanish, so a massive great battle. Victory with Nelson on board was leading one column through the uh, lines, Admiral Collingwood on the Royal Sovereign leading the other one through. And the victory had cut through the line, was closely engaged with the French ship called the Red Redoubtable, uh, Red as we'd say. Right up against us here, right alongside. This is our mizzen mast, the backmost mast. The French ship's mizzen mast was here, and from the fighting top, sort of that height, up on the French mast there, French musketeers were peppering this deck with lead musket balls, like this little one here. Not very big, but it's quite heavy. They were making the right mess of this. It wasn't a healthy place to be. Captain Hardy, Admiral Nelson, pacing up and down on the deck. Nelson got to this box here. He turned, and he got hit from above by a musket ball, which threw his shoulder, threw his lung, into his spine. Fell down here, mortally wounded. Um, he said, I'm shot through, you know, he, he knew he was for it. Carried down below by Sergeant Second of the Royal Marines, a couple of able seamen. He died three hours later on the Orlock deck below the waterline. The battle with the Red Tarp still continued. They tried to board us over the forecastle. We tried to, we fought them off. Um, later on, the Temeraire, another British ship, came along on the other side of the Red Tarp. Between the Victory and the, and the uh, Temeraire, we forced the Red Tarp into surrendering. And the battle still continued. So what we're going to do now, we're going to head off down this way, go right to the forecastle and down onto the next deck, and we're going to talk about my favourite subject, kids. Do you know what that is? Nope. It is punishment. <laughs> <laughs> so, who's been naughty? Yeah, this one. <laughs> <laughs> know, we got a lot of volunteers. Put your hands up. Yeah, so you and one of you. Yeah, this yeah, one This here. one here. <laughs> Come over here then. What's your name? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hands up. <laughs> yeah, that's it. You'd be tied to here. Oh dear. You'd have your shirt stripped from your back, and do you know what would happen here? Cat and mice. Exactly. You'd be flogged. Oh dear. There's nothing like it. No, no child protection on here. <laughs> <laughs> and so we've been whipped with the cat of nine tails. Okay, just then. Suspicious. You're all right, though. You've been good. <laughs> yeah, he's nodding like that. <laughs> all right, we're going this way, guys. You stay there then. Bye <laughs> <Right> then. <laughs> <laughs> Ethan, Ethan. Oh. come up. Good job. <laughs>